China and Brazil have recently made a bilateral trade agreement that will lead them to use their national currencies instead of the US dollar for commercial transactions. The agreement will allow China and Brazil to conduct financial transactions directly between the Chinese yuan and Brazilian rias without having to convert their respective currencies into the US dollar. For many financial analysts, this is the beginning of the end of the US dollar as the world's currency used for commercial exchanges. In this video, the goal is to understand if the dollar is really losing its throne as the currency used for commercial exchanges in favor of other currencies. But why is the dollar the most widely used currency for commercial exchanges? Why has there been dollarization? What does dollarization mean? This infographic allows us to understand this phenomenon well. The dollar has dominated all commercial transactions and capital flows for decades, particularly since the post-war period, precisely on 1,944 with the Bretton Woods Agreements. A set of international rules stipulated among the major industrialized countries of the Western world, while the Second World War was still ongoing. The agreements covered various economic and financial topics. Financial institutions such as the International Monetary Fund and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development were established. A dollar-centric system was created for international traders, who mainly conducted business in dollars. For example, the prices of commodities such as oil from now on will be expressed in dollars. But how is it possible that in a negotiating table with 44 nations, it was decided that the currency for global trade would be the dollar? Quite simply, the United States at that time was a world power on an economic, political, and military level. A year later, they would drop the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, a way to demonstrate their military dominance to the world. When it comes to negotiating with this entity, what weighs heavily is not just the history of a nation, but the political, economic, and military power that this nation had. During the Bretton Woods agreements, it was also decided that the central banks of each nation must maintain a stable exchange rate with the dollar. Specifically, if the exchange rate rose or fell by one percentage point compared to the agreements, non-US banks had to realign it through open market operations. In practice, during the Bretton Woods agreements, a gold exchange standard was defined, in which the monetary base is given by a fixed amount of gold and is based on fixed exchange rates between currencies, all currencies tied to the dollar. The dollar was in turn tied to gold, which was stored in the central bank vaults. All agreements derived directly or indirectly from Bretton Woods did not provide for proper control of the amount of dollars issued. These agreements were clearly revised as the Allies were not very much in line with this philosophy. The fact that the US could autonomously control the dollar missions to which all other exchange rates were then linked was an unfair advantage and was contested several times by France and Germany as it meant that the US exported their inflation, thus impoverishing the rest of the world. This is still happening now and is the reason why emerging markets led by China want to decouple from the dollar. In the 1960s, European and Japanese economies began to emerge as exporting powers, creating strong competition with American exports. At that time, the dollar was still tied to the amount of gold held in central bank vaults. However, it became difficult to maintain this link between the circulating dollars and the gold in the vaults, and in addition, the Vietnam War began, which was all financed through deficits. To finance the war, the United States began printing money, causing inflation that was strongly contested by other participating nations. There is a limit to the amount of money that can be printed because it must still be linked to gold. In the 1970s, Nixon unlinked the dollar from gold, ending its convertibility. With Nixon, the dollar became a fiat currency, a currency that is not backed by gold, but rather a value attributed to it at a political level. In the short term, the dollar tends to increase in value during periods of instability, but in the medium to long term, it is undisputed that it loses value due to inflation. It becomes a safe haven currency compared to other currencies. When there is fear in the financial and economic markets, it is better to hold dollars. Although the dollar is no longer linked to gold, it is perceived as a safe haven asset because it has a low correlation with the stock market in the short term. Investors exit the stock market and put their money into liquidity, or dollars. 
When there is high liquidity and many people want to buy or sell this currency, it is important to have a politically stable system with economic growth and financial stability. These are characteristics that not all nations have. This brief historical treaty helps to understand why the US dollar has emerged as the world's dominant currency for commercial exchanges. Now, why after almost 70 years of dollarization of the world are we discussing a de-dollarization process? A very strong US dollar can significantly harm emerging countries. China, Brazil, Russia, countries are also known as BRICS, countries that are either heavily reliant on exporting raw materials like Brazil and South Africa, or countries with a strong manufacturing focus like China and India. Strengthening the dollar puts emerging countries in crisis because emerging countries depend on foreign investment and foreign capital, which can easily evaporate when the dollar gains value. Emerging markets tend to see capital flows when the dollar is strong, meaning that there is less interest in investing in emerging countries. If the dollar is strong, interest rates are likely to be higher, and therefore emerging countries, which often have to issue debt to finance themselves in dollars, have a harder time repaying their debt. Why should an emerging country borrow in another currency that is not its own? The worst case scenario is clearly default for an emerging country because it must repay a loan in dollars. Therefore, it is extremely difficult to repay this debt, and this is why the Borysius countries, such as Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, are working on their currency because the goal is to reduce dependence on or dominance of the dollar. The agreement between China and Brazil is the beginning of a collaboration between the Borysius countries with the aim of changing a dollar-centric financial system. Who is leading this initiative? China and Russia are. The economies of Russia and India abandoned the dollar and the euro in all their commercial exchanges as of December 22 of 2022 year. Saudi Arabia is winking at China and taking a step forward to join the bloc. Saudi Arabia is one of the world's leading oil producers, so it is particularly important that oil is priced in dollars. But Saudi Arabia shares this mission and is increasingly approaching Chinese policies and is considering accepting yuan instead of dollars for oil sales to China. Furthermore, for the first time, France is also involved in an energy trade with China that will be settled in yuan instead of dollars. So, there are strong interests led by emerging countries to be able to use other currencies for transactions such as oil or in general for trade. Therefore, the end of the dollar as we know it. Many nations want to abandon the dollar combined with excessive spending by the government, which has had to increase the debt ceiling several times, now sees the United States with a public debt around 130% of GDP. So the problem exists and a principle of de-dollarization is already underway and will not end. However, this does not mean that it is the end of the dollar, at least not in the short term. Why? When a country wants to take on debt, and for emerging countries, we have seen that the dollar is a currency that is often used, also known as the hardcore currency, to finance their debt and investments. In 2000, the use of the dollar as a currency to finance foreign investors' debt was around 77%, and today we have decreased to 63%. So, it is a slow and unstoppable ongoing process, but it cannot lead us to say that the dollar will disappear in two years. Today, the dollar is still the primary currency in terms of world reserves, accounting for about 60%, while the euro accounts for about 20%. So, there is still a demand for the dollar at a global level, but it is indisputable that the dollar is beginning to face fierce competition from the Chinese yuan. In 2022, central banks worldwide hoarded gold. Could it be related to this de-dollarization process? While you've reached the end of the video, if you are interested in learning more about similar topics, here you will find other really interesting videos from the channel. Thanks for watching this video, click on the like button if you enjoyed it, and do not forget to subscribe in case you didn't. See you on the next one.